At times in pharmacy practice, particularly when compounding, you may encounter situations in which the desired amount of a drug is less than the amount that can be accurately weighed on a standard Class A torsion balance found in most pharmacies. In situations such as this, when you are dealing with a solid component such as powders, performing solid aliquot calculations and preparing a solid aliquot will allow you to obtain the small amount of material that you desire. The following narration will take you through, step by step, the aliquot calculations and procedure involved in obtaining 30 milligrams of activated charcoal. Our goal in this example is to obtain 30 milligrams of activated charcoal. In order to provide you with a visual reference as to how small an amount this is, 30 milligrams of activated charcoal has been weighed on a sensitive electronic balance and is depicted in this slide. Our pharmacy in this example, as is the case in many pharmacies, is equipped only with a Class A torsion balance. The smallest amount that can be weighed on this balance, while maintaining a margin of error less than 5%, is 120 milligrams. In other words, the smallest amount that can be weighed on your balance and not exceed 5% error in weighing is 120 milligrams, which is visually depicted in this slide. Therefore, our challenge is this. How do we obtain 30 milligrams of activated charcoal when the smallest amount we can weigh on our balance is 120 milligrams? This is where solid aliquot calculations and procedures come into play. Before proceeding further, let's start by inventorying what we know. First, we know that our least weighable quantity using a Class A torsion balance with a sensitivity requirement of 6 milligrams and a 5% margin of error in weighing is 120 milligrams. We also know that the amount of activated charcoal that we desire is 30 milligrams. Knowing these two things allows us to calculate a dilution factor. The dilution factor can be calculated by dividing what we can weigh, which is our least weighable quantity, by what we wish to weigh, which in this case is 30 milligrams. By performing this simple calculation, we obtain a dilution factor of 4. Our next step is to use this dilution factor to proportionally increase the amount of active ingredient and diluent that will be needed in order to eventually obtain the 30 milligram dose that we desire. This is accomplished by first multiplying the 30 milligram dose that is needed by a dilution factor of 4. Performing this calculation, we determine that 120 milligram of activated charcoal, shown here, will be needed to prepare the aliquot. We then multiply the least weighable quantity of 120 milligrams by the dilution factor of 4. Performing the second calculation, we determine that the total weight of the aliquot that we need to prepare is 480 milligrams. Next, we must determine the amount of diluent that will be required to prepare the aliquot. This is done by first taking the total weight of aliquot that we need to prepare, calculated previously to be 480 milligrams. Then, subtracting from that total weight, 120 milligrams of charcoal. Because, remember, that in order to prepare our aliquot, 120 milligrams of the total weight needed has to come from the activated charcoal. Performing this calculation, we determine that 360 milligrams of diluent, that is lactose in this case, as shown in this slide, will be needed to combine with activated charcoal in order to prepare the aliquot. At this point, all of the calculations needed to prepare the aliquot are complete. The next step is to perform the aliquot procedure itself 
in order to achieve our goal of obtaining 30 milligrams of activated charcoal. We accomplish this by first weighing 120 milligrams of activated charcoal and 360 milligrams of the diluent lactose, both of which are represented here. We then mix these two components together in a mortar using geometric dilution until a uniform homogeneous mixture is obtained. This aliquot mixture, combining 120 milligrams activated charcoal and 360 milligrams of lactose, is shown here. Finally, from this aliquot mixture, we must now weigh out 120 milligrams. Because it is this 120 milligrams of aliquot, shown on the right side of the slide, that contains the 30 milligram dose of activated charcoal that we desire. Please take note of this slide and note the difference in appearance between the material in the weigh boat on the left, which is 30 milligrams of activated charcoal weighed out on an electronic balance, to that on the right, which is 120 milligrams of aliquot mixture containing 30 milligrams of activated charcoal. Although the amounts and appearance of each appear different, the amount of activated charcoal in each weigh boat is the same. Also take note of the lighter appearance of the aliquot mixture on the right. This is indicative of the 30 milligrams of activated charcoal being dispersed and distributed throughout the diluent. At this point we should double check our calculations. This is easily done by setting up the following equation. If we know that there is 120 milligrams of activated charcoal in 480 milligrams of total aliquot, then 30 milligrams of activated charcoal will reside in what weight of aliquot? Solving for x, we see that 120 milligrams of a properly prepared aliquot should indeed contain the 30 milligrams of activated charcoal that is needed for our dose.